She is up against Lucas Esper Bertu, and he has brought Sultai Ultimatum. Agro versus Control. Who do you fancy here? Unfortunately, as much as I love Sultai Ultimatum, this is perhaps its toughest matchup in the entire format. Mono White Aggro, not the aggressive deck that you want to see, certainly worse for you than Mono Red, and it's because of its disruptive creatures combined with cards like Selfless Savior. So. Right now, looking at Lucas's hand, it, he does have an extinction event, which will certainly help, but still not quite enough tools to potentially stem aggression should Ali have one of those aggressive draws. The self savior has become such a headache for control players everywhere as we see it get in for the second point of damage. Lewis coming down as well to uh, join its friend on the battlefield. Yeah, I think the problem right now for Lucas is he doesn't really have any targeted removal. So even if this extinction event comes down, he wouldn't have a follow-up to what Ali may present. Fortunately for him, Ali has had one of perhaps the slowest hands possible for uh, Mono White. There's no Faceless Haven. There's no two drop, no real curve. So now, yes, she's going to be cracking in for six points of damage here, gaining some life. But this extinction event from Lucas will actually end up being quite potent, especially because he can cast the Behold the Multiverse before getting to it. He is going to go down to 12 from this attack. Ali, just with that Skyclave apparition. See what this finds off this hold. What are you looking for if you're Lucas? Targeted removal would be great. A bit of ramp, something like Binding the Old Gods would be perfect. It would be a follow-up piece of targeted removal after this extinction event, and it would allow you to uh, have some ramp to get you towards that Emergent Ultimatum a bit faster. Double Aaron's Epiphany, pretty nice, <laughs> as it does mean that Lucas can perhaps use the next turn after this event as a bit of a setup turn potentially foretell double Alrin's Epiphany if he doesn't have any other plays, or maybe put a Yorian in hand and then get something like a chain of three turns in a row should he so choose to do so. So Ali is going to sack off that self savior despite the fact that uh, Lurus gets exiled anyway, just so that self savior goes to the graveyard and doesn't get exiled alongside. Chooses not to play out this Skyclave Apparition just as a 2-2 threat. Yeah, but unfortunately for Ali, Lucas gets the good news. There is nothing waiting on the other side of the board, which means if he wants, he can double foretell, and the next four turns or so may just be Lucas's at this point. Famous Haven off the top for Ali. This is pretty tricky for some of these control decks to deal with, but as you say, Marnie, it looks like Lucas is going to be taking a lot of turns here perhaps all of the turns remaining in this game, as it were. And <laughs> in case it was necessary to have an answer for that Faceless Sleeve, and he does draw the Heartless Act as well. So from Lucas's position, everything is looking great, and Ali's had enough. <laughs> yeah, the Emergent Ultimatum on the stack. A couple of lands left in hand. And she says, nope, let's go to game number two. So what weapons can she bring out of the sideboard here for this Sultai Ultimatum matchup? The big ones are those two copies of Dranith Magistrate, stopping your opponent from being able to actually cast the cards off of Emergent Ultimatum. Really good tool for the Mono White deck. We may also see that fourth copy of Stone Coil Serpent get boarded in uh, for the Sultai Ultimatum deck. A lot of their removal is... Uh, can be multicolored based, especially those four binding the old gods. They also have Heartless Axe, so if you do play a Stone Cold Serpent that is bigger than a 3-3, it may be problematic for them to remove it completely. So certainly a few tools to try to fight uh, what Lucas is bringing, bringing to the table there. You see Ali sideboarding pretty quickly. She's definitely played this matchup a couple of times. Yeah, this is the matchup you are preparing for. On Lucas's side, we do see a bit more targeted removal in the sideboard there. Two copies of Eliminate, as well as a copy of Elspeth's Nightmare. May also be interested in bringing in this copy of 
Wilt, just because it would serve as an answer to cards like the Maul of, that you may otherwise struggle with that can put on that big burst of damage. This opening hand for Ali Warfield in game number two looking a lot better than the previous one. Al Saeed, Selfless Savior, Dranath Magistrate, that piece of hate you were talking about, and Luminarch Aspirin. Oh, yeah, and looking Ali's over hand at looking Luca's great. hand. Oh, wow, Luca's hand looks great too. Omen of the Sea Shadows, Verdict Cultivate, and the key first ultimatum. Yeah, it was a mulligan to six, so we'll have to choose to put one of these cards back. And the only awkwardness with Lucas's current hand is all three of the lands at the moment come into play taps. So he is not representing that turn three cultivate, turn four shadows verdict that may be so important. He really needs to find a land like that pathway on top that would allow him to play that cultivate on turn three. And fortunately, he is able to do so. Hero best to see God, not exactly the draw that is going to help him at this point in the game. And we do see him there fetching that forest, getting ready to fire off the cultivate next turn. But meanwhile, Ali Warfield is on the battlefield. Luminarch Aspirin has already put a counter on Selfless Savior and. Uh, she could potentially double spell this turn with the Al Seed and the Magistrate. This is a pretty nice aggressive start from Ali. Doesn't have that big burst, but isn't overextending onto the board. And with that Faceless Haven available as well, that means that next turn she could be coming across for as much as 10 damage. And then if Luke, even if Lucas has Shadow's Verdict, the turn after the Faceless Haven would still be there. So Ali has actually found a line to set up a two-turn lethal that plays around Lucas's board wipe spells. And I don't know if if the Sultai deck is capable of stopping this, because at this point, this is just going to be lethal without Lucas having a choice on if I remove the board, I die to the Haven. If I leave the board, I die to the board. Well, not a lot of choices here for Lucas. Fires off the Shadows Verdict. But of course, the Faceless Haven hanging out there among the lands for Ali. And Marnie, this card, Faceless Haven, just what a card. Yeah, it, it is perhaps the defining card of aggressive decks in the current standard format. It is what's more or less single-handedly has returned mono red to popularity and made this mono white deck a viable threat because you no longer just fold to a board wipe spell before playing a deck like this mono white deck your opponent would play that shadows verdict and your game would be over but as it stands because ali was able to have that creature land waiting there uh she was still able to get across for lethal and lucas just had no plays there ali making quick work of her rivals league colleague in game number two we're gonna see a decider here oh Five lands, Seagate, Restoration, and Wilt in the opener here for Lucas. Seagate Restoration may as well be a six land. You are never going to get to cast that seven mana card here, and I think you just have to mulligan it. You're looking for early plays. This is much more the type of hand that you need in Lucas's position. Let's have a look at what Ali is working with. Double Faces, Haven, Giant Killer, and Maul of the Skyclaves. So not a lot of actual creatures but does have the key card in faces haven decides to send that one back yeah the Both six from ali not much here. better and it was essentially the same right just to trade the self as savior for a, a mall of the sky cliff. Yeah, and you have one less Faceless Haven now, so the first piece of targeted removal from Lucas is better because there isn't that backup creature land. It, ooh, and Lucas's hand just continues to improve here with that Elspeth's Nightmare now. I was just going to talk about how great of a draw Lurus was, but Elspeth's Nightmare does a great job of cleaning up the graveyard uh, of your opponent. Lucas finds a Heartless Act as well. This is going to be a close one. 
Yeah, so far looking really good for Lucas. Does have that early start that he needs, and Allie doesn't have all the tools that she's looking for to combat it. Not that real big aggressive burst that she had in game two. Not having that Luminarch Aspirant on turn two makes such a difference between this game and the last. The rest of the Dream Den hits the battlefield. Then of a multi format all star, Luris. Yeah, and now Lucas is able to set up with this Elspeth's Nightmare on the Savior. Heartless at the Luris in response to the sacrifice. Make sure to get it off the battlefield. And then you do have that Elspeth's Nightmare to give you an idea what's waiting in the hand from Ali next turn. Potentially, if Lucas can go land, land in the next two draw steps, he would be able to get to Emergent Ultimatum as well. Skyclave Apparition is going to put a little stop in that plan, but it is just a 3-mana 2-2 two -two here for Ali Warfield. Not really what you want if you're just trying to get your opponent dead quickly. Yeah, that, that is not the line here. Faceless Haven attacking for 4 would also be problematic as Ali would not be developing onto the board, playing into Chris's game plan. I, I, I do love to see that uh, Fabled Passage activation from Lucas first as it ensures that 1, he's able to Omen of the Sea to scry for more potential value, and 2, he can make sure that he gets the land he needs. So more or less any land from his deck that isn't a solely blue land next Next turn would allow him to cast Emergent Ultimatum, and for Ali, she does not have an answer to this. So she finds Luminarch Aspirant, which uh, is very impressive as a card when you get it down on turn number two and it puts three or four counters on your creatures. But right now, it's just going to be a nice little grizzly bear. Yeah, unfortunately for Luminar Casper, we have passed the point of the game where this card is going to do what it needs to do against a deck like Sultai Ultimatum. On turn two, as you mentioned, is fantastic. But here, maybe Ali is going to get two more turns. If Lucas is able to find a land like we see him do, then Emergent mm -hmm. Ultimatum is going to come down, and that could just be enough to once again warrant the concession from Ali. Yeah, top, top, not what you want to see if you're sat in Ali's seat. Fabled Passage is the set untapped land. We're going to see Merchant Ultimatum go on the stack. Looks like she's going to let resolve this. Time. Let's see what Luke is getting out of the library. Almost certainly an Alrin's Epiphany, uh, Cure, Best the Sea God, a second great option. For the third option, it would really depend on whether Lucas wants to respect this giant killer that is potentially in Ali's hand and go for exactly that Valky God of Lies, just because you can play it as Tybalt, and that means you're not exposing something like a Vorinclex, something like a Gargaroth to this giant killer. Instead, you are just safe, and Ali's best option of not giving you an extra turn would give you two incredible cards and i i just don't think the mono white deck can come back from this position yeah just a single copy of giant killer in hand luminarch aspirant on the battlefield ali's gonna go give you give lucas the extra turn as well as the tybalt Now Tibble can start going up, try to find another ultimatum, try to find another epiphany, either of which would just be game ending here. As it stands, Ali's still not a great, in a great position, but going to fight it out may as well. No Tibble just finds a couple of lands, but we see that copy of the Seeker's Chariot in hand for Lucas as well. And the Seeker's Chariot, obviously one of my favorite cards because it's the art is just so adorable, but... And very glad to see it make waves in standard. Just a four mana, four four vehicle that comes down and makes a couple of cats. Can uh, copy any number of tokens that you have out on the battlefield. A real tool for these control decks to leverage against this kind of type of aggressive strategy. Yeah, and Lucas just playing this so safe, making sure that 
there's no creatures remaining on Ali's side of the board. That would give him many options here. Can cast the Aspirant, making sure not to put the counter on that token from the Skyclave Apparition earlier. You don't want to put it at that crucial 4 power that would allow it to get chopped down by Giant Killer. Instead, just staying back, I'm going to put it on a bird, spread out my damage, and make sure that I remain under that 4 power mark. Lucas's board looking like it's just in such a dominating position now. And for this mono white deck, you know, there isn't really a single card. It would have to be a series of draws, and Ali says that's gonna do it. Lucas Esper Bertu taking round three down two games to one against Ali Warfield on mono white aggro.